Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Interchangeably, Lakshman and CTL, both, both is me. So don't get confused. Uh, delighted to be with all of you here today. Wanted to talk to you about how Tech Mahindra is co-creating with our customers and our partners, and sometimes both, to do two things. One is to ad address important industry problems, which have a huge replicab replicability across the enterprise. And the other is to identify trends that are emerging, which we believe have a huge growth potential, and the ability to tap into it. The idea is there are strengths that we bring to the table, and then there are complementary strengths that our partners and customers bring to the table. And how do we combine one plus one to make 11 happen? That's the story today. I'm going to talk to you about factory of the future, which falls under the industry 4.0 classification. But before that, I want to talk to you what a couple of important industry trends that are taking place. The first one is the Western world is woken up to the fact that they are over-dependent on China from a manufacturing perspective. There's a customer of ours, the single largest market of the US, 92% of the sourcing, mark my words, 92% of the sourcing in China. So we did a work with them where we moved a billion dollars worth of manufacturing outside to Mexico, India, Vietnam, all these places. The Western world now says that we'll have to move, which means there will be a whole lot of change in the supply chain, new factories coming up in multiple different places. And we hope India is going to, the first three decades, the last three, four decades was IT, the next three, four decades we believe could be manufacturing. The second is President got the infrastructure bill passed. It's going to be a trillion dollar investment into the US economy. Obviously, bridges, but they are also going to focus on moving manufacturing capability into the US. You must have all heard Intel is putting up a chip manufacturing plant in Ohio. A Taiwanese company is putting up a chip manufacturing plant in Phoenix. There's going to be a lot of government support to bring some amount of manufacturing back into the US. We believe that that's another important macroeconomic trend that we need to keep in mind. And the third is what digital technologies have done. They've just swept the landscape in the last few years. AI, AR, VR, now metaverse, quantum computing. They are making us, it's making it e easy for us to put together solutions that we couldn't have imagined we could do in the past, right? And with that, I'll go into the factory of the future. This is a partnership with a large automotive OE. And uh, we've implemented, whatever I'm talking about, it's a living lab at Chakan, and we've implemented this. It's working for all of you to see. We've implemented, you know, leveraging the telecom strengths that we have. We've implemented 5G in the Chakan plant, right? And so I'm going to take you to different parts of the plant. So just follow me as I walk through the plant. The first place is the paint shop, right? Now you have, as you go in, there is a, a, a XUV 700 that's been painted. And the, the new vehicle that's coming in is a Scorpio. This computer vision in the plant, hooked onto the 5G LTE network. The computer vision will now know that as the XUV 700 goes and Scorpio comes in, this is a Scorpio. It will change the paint settings automatically so that the new vehicle gets painted and gets out. The second thing is flexibility. Everything about an auto OEM is going to be f about flexibility. If you go to a body shop, you don't have dedicated plants now running each vehicle. It's flexible. You have a XUV 700 followed by a Scorpio followed by something else. And here again, computer vision is at work. It figures out which is the product that's coming in. And now 
to add to the complexity, all of you guys have become discreening buyers now. You can customize your own vehicle, which means if that customization comes as the vehicle is rolling in in the assembly line, parts that are required at different parts of the assembly line automatically come in. The third concept that I want to talk to you about is called no fault forward. So you have convey conveyor belts. These conveyor belts are interlocked with hand tools. Now assume that I'm a worker in the factory and I'm tightening nuts and I've not applied enough torque. The conveyor belt will come to a halt until I rectify or whoever is the worker on the shop floor rectifies the fault. So this is, these are intelligent lines, error free lines. And what it has done to productivity is just amazing. Earlier, engine used to be tested by tuning on the engine for 25 minutes. Every engine for 25 minutes. Just imagine the gasoline that's getting burnt. Today, because of this, they've stopped testing engines altogether. It's not required because you're so sure that what you're rolling out is fantastic. Now, as you look at the the factory, the idea is to come out with a single platform which will provide services. Again, with computer vision, if someone has to wear a hard hat in a particular place and uh, they take the hard hat off, immediately computer vision send a, send a message across, a warning, so that, that that incident gets corrected. So you're making the plant a safer place, you're making the plant a more productive space, you're making the the more cognitive space. It's just amazing what digital technologies are doing to transform this operation. So from a tech perspective, we have always been very comfortable connecting the shop floor to the top floor. So you have SAP systems, you have MES systems, you connect wire all and make it make it. That's been our sweet spot. Now, in collaboration with the automotive OEM, what we are now doing is we are moving into the plant. We are using our technologies, edge computing, a whole lot of tech. The manufacturing operations end to end. Right? And so we are very thrilled about, uh, you know, what we're seeing, what we're able here uh, to make production lines flexible and automated. Look at the market potential here. This is estimated in global spend. My colleague Abhirup said, we know the physical world. world. We love operating at the intersection, which is digital, right? This is an example, you know, of how we can make this happen. And look at the value creation here. It's just amazing. Zero defect, there's a 70%. Now, the beauty of digital technologies is working in thin air. You're putting statistics on the table, right? And so, why we believe that everyone will adopt it? is simply because this pays for itself, pays more. In this plant, they are using lesser energy to manufacture an SUV than they did five years ago. That's the statistics, right? And so uh, the other thing is you see the last item here, 2,000 machines that are connected. So you have sensors. The sensors are bringing data in. We are doing advanced analytics in the background, and the machine is talking to you 24 bar 7. It's telling you I'm not well. So you provide intervention services. You lengthen the life of parts. It's a great sustainability story. All this is a great sustainability story. And what happens here? You provide preventive maintenance, predictive maintenance. And what is the end result? Productivity goes up. All this, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a PowerPoint, it's a living lab at Chakan and, you know, Rohit can arrange a tour for you to visit the plant to see all of these. The next thing that I want to talk to you about is how we are co-creating with an automotive OEM from an electric vehicle's perspective. Now you take a automotive OEM, I'm talking not just automotive, heavy trucks, everybody, there's an explosion happening on the electric vehicle front. As we talk, there are factories that have been set up, both brownfield and greenfield. 
for manufacturing EVs, for manufacturing batteries. And we believe that we are in a, you know, you heard Abhirup talk about uh, what we are doing in the electric vehicle space. I would, I would strongly encourage all of you to visit our booth here, where they brought the e-axles for you to see. Right? And so, we are, I think, in the, when this explosion on EV is happening, I believe that we are very, very well placed. Right? Very well placed how? We can do this entire value chain. Top hat design. You know we acquired Pininfarina, which is one of the leading industrial design houses, automotive design house. Right? So, top hat design, you know, then moving on to manufacturing and supply chain in is a very complex space. And Techmahindra has deep expertise. We've got control. You know, we invested in a company called iTech, which does uh, RFIDs. So, if you go into a warehouse, you know, managing the warehouse, interconnected to RFID, having a control dashboard, these are all we've already created, right? And then, you know, doing the interior design and then the platform, the e-axle in particular. This is at the heart of EV propulsion. And we have, you know, configurable e axles from 50 kilowatts to 150 kilowatts. And we believe that we can bring everything on this platform tightly, you know, coupled together to deliver, uh, you know, great results. So this is what, you know, these people are doing, right? They set up comp complex plants and the way they operate today is it, they would, it takes multiple years for them to get a huge LNG plant or a data center for Google or something like that set up and they hand it over and walk away. So the value prop here is how can Techem and his EPC major come together to deliver a range of high-end digital services like I described in the factory of the future, right? And we get into this plant and provide this entire range of services, providing preventive maintenance, predictive maintenance, safety, everything that I talked to you about. And create high-end digital revenue which comes at good margins. And stay embedded within these projects for years. Now, why, why this partnership? Because the automotive space doing the OT work, not the IT work, the OT work, that is what the partner, the automotive OEM major we are working with, they are bringing in that expertise and we are learning along with them. This EPC major is a big player in the oil and gas space. So they are going to bring the domain expertise from an OT perspective, right, and combined with our expertise, right, and so different industries. We will go into process every other industry. So develop factory of the future and just amplify it, take it further, deeper, right? And uh, the advantage is this is a firm that's been in business for 100 years. It's got a blue chip customer base and we have complete access to this customer base. It reduces our time to market and I'll tell you why it's so important. We, someone asked me if, you know, if Tecum is, in the, is a runner, what kind of a runner are you? Do you run sprints or do you run marathons? And we run marathons. For us, a new deal could take eight to nine months to 12 months to open up. We would spend a million dollars in pursuit. So if you have a great solution like the factory of the future, and then you tie up with, the, with this EPC major and open up their customer base, reduce their time to market, while parallelly every day, as you talk about the factory of the future, you're investing in it, you're learning, and you're getting better and better and better. The distance between you and competition is getting wider and wider and wider. That's, that's what uh, excites me most about this space. Now, I'm going to talk to you about another exciting thing. I, I just love this technology. Augmented reality, virtual reality is going to transform the way we live and work, the way our children go to school, the way, uh, the way they are going to, the way education is going to come. Oh, I'm so excited with this technology. It's affordable, it's easily mountable, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, how it's transforming the way an automotive customer of ours delivers service. Now, this happened during the pandemic. You buy a car. The car develops a problem. You take it to the mechanic. The mechanic would replace whatever, you drive back, right? That's the fairy tale. In 2%, 3% of the cases, the problem in your car is so complex that the dealer mechanic can't solve it. At that time, 
the automotive OEM has to have a subject matter expert fly in to fix the problem. Or the car has to be shipped back to a central place. Just imagine the cost, the pain, and the pandemic people were not able to travel. So what we did here was to put a solution together where the dealer mechanic, it, the concept is I see, I see what you see. That's a concept, right? And so the, the SME sitting wherever would wear this glass and the dealer mechanic would be wearing, you know, the intelligent glass, you know, up front and sitting remote, the subject matter expert can guide the dealer mechanic to fix the problem. So hands are free. They can bring up spreadsheets. They can bring up diagrams and guide the dealer mechanic to resolve. 80% first time resolution. That's the impact of this technology. And when you do this successfully, we, d we did it with 15 dealers first. 15 dealers. Today, this is deployed with 4,000 dealers worldwide. China, Taiwan, Europe, US, everywhere. And I just looked back and said, my God, what is the scope of this business? The scope of this business is in the US, there are 1,87,000 technicians. 1.4 million repair jobs where tickets are open today. That is the potential. And you don't stop with this. You can sell this solution can be taken across all our verticals. Just imagine there's a logistics company in the warehouse, you go into the warehouse, I talk to you about our supply chain solution where we have a control tower, we have, you know, we have this RFID solution. Link to all this can be ARVR. Anywhere where someone has to maintain a machine, hands-free, this solution will work, right? And I'm going to ask you a, a trivia question, so pay attention. We today have customers where we are billing $20 million a year on this service. Multiple customers. So we started with one auto OEM. Today, multiple auto OEMs have bought it. And with every auto OEM, new features are coming in. One of the newest features that have been implemented is so exciting. When your car has a problem, there's a defective part. And when the defective part is taken out, they use this technology to validate whether the part can be repaired or has to be scrapped. Now the part gets shipped back to the OEM in whatever fashion, right? So there's a whole lot of cost incurred in transportation. Now all that will be avoided completely. The SME sitting in the central can say, don't even ship it, scrap it right away. So the trick question now, 20 million is a revenue. How many people do you think are delivering it? Take a guess. Pardon? Five. 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 You are at a different level. <laughs> you are tougher than I am. Any other helpful second guesses? Okay, thank you. Fifteen people are delivering this. Fifteen people are delivering 20 million worth of service. I can keep expanding that and the number of people I have to add. What I love about this business is we are disconnecting revenue from people deployed. And we are delivering margin, and every day we are getting better at this job. That's what excites the hell out of me. Hello, everyone. So, My name is Brian Jenkins, and I am the strategy manager for the Ford Technical Assistance Center. My team and I were tasked with developing and launching the See What I See program, better known as SWIST for short. We knew from the inception of this program that this would be a global process and that we would need a partner that was capable of co-creating and launching a project that involved a high level of technical complexity, while also scaling across the majority of our global regions. Our collaboration with Tech Mahindra has been a key factor in the success of planning and deploying the Swiss project. Tech Mahindra has provided Ford with a comprehensive turnkey solution covering all aspects of the rollout, including dealer enrollments, shipping, logistics, along with dealer activation and onboarding, as well as dealer support. Their partnership has enabled the Ford team to meet all of our expansion targets, 
and we truly value the working relationship that we have developed as a result of this partnership. We are looking forward to the continued collaboration and success of the Swiss project as new use cases and opportunities for this technology present themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll move on to a partnership that we have, and this is in the public domain. This is a joint venture with Sumitomo, which is one of the, one of the world's largest, most admired conglomerates. And uh, this is to, this joint venture with them is in the, is in the, to address the Japan's uh, engineering research and development market for automotive, which is expected to be about 50 billion. Why this partnership? You know, Japan is a unique market, cultural, language skills that are required, access to customers. Sumitomo brings all of that. And I've already described the range of skills that Tech Mahindra brings to the table from an automotive engineering perspective, right? And so we believe that this is a great marriage of two partners who bring complementary skills to the table, right? And the deep, you know, uh, talent base that we have to, to, to kind of scale and address the needs. Those are the reasons, you know, for this JV. And uh, we believe that uh, both of us bring the right credentials, the market's ripe, and we are very excited about this. Finally, I want to talk to you about a partnership that we have in creating, you know, a, a, a cognitive city and a few cities that have been developed, and these are all a trillion dollar projects, right? And uh, at the base level is a 5G++ network that connects the whole city, tourism spots, hospitals, uh, uh, you know, sports stadiums, residences, everything, right? And then a layer above is the data analytics layer. Because once you connect, everything starts talking. So the ability to bring this data into a data lake, harness it, do advanced analytics, makes decision. And on top of it is the AI layer, where it'll, it's cognitive, it can take intelligent decisions, right? So that is conceptually what's happening within these intelligent cities that have been constructed end to end. Our digital engineering services, we, we'll bring everything that we have at TechM. You know, our telco strength, uh, our digital engineering strength, our edge computing, a whole lot of technology that goes into the background to create and make all of this happen, right? And so we are excited about this as well. And this is my final slide. You can't do everything in life alone, right? And we have to partner in order to you know, get complementary skills together to be able to make magic happen. And 30% uh, of our customers have been with us for five years or more. In many cases, we know more about the customer in parts than the customer knows themselves. And uh, we are now tapping into that strength to understand, you know, what else can we do? Our customers know exactly what the problems are. You know, the Ford solution that you saw, both of us brought it together. There was a problem, we sat down, we discussed. So we have access to a huge knowledge base, both with our employees and with our customers. And we're going to tap this. All this that I talked to you about just now, I think we are scratching the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to come, and I'm excited. And thank you again for this opportunity.